we were at least competent, we'd know what we're dealing with. And yet people are fearful when they see the structure of UKDA and look at their membership number and say, oh my goodness, it appears to be three lots of numbers, uh, 18 digits, that have been divided into three lots of six, 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 six. And yet we are looking at a system that has been there for hundreds of years where they have claimed to hold the mark. And they are the representatives of Lucifer. People keep telling us they're satanic. It's in front of us and we still don't see. Well, let's take it further. Where does the word cesti come from? It comes from the word cestus. And what does cestus mean? It means the girdle or the mark of Venus. Well, what's another name for Venus? The morning star. Well, what is the morning star in Latin? Lucifer. The mark of the fool is Lucifer, Lucifer, Lucifer. Cestus, Cestus, Cestus. Cestus KV, Cestus KV, Cestus KV. That is their system. Well, how do you destroy their magic? You don't destroy it by standing in front of them bravely, crazily bravely, and say, you've been naughty, you've been evil. People have done that, and I respect their bravery immensely. I saw a show on TV the other night. It wasn't necessarily great acting, uh, gods and generals, and I, and I cried. I found myself crying at the idealism of the Virginians in standing up against what they saw as the oppression and the smashing of the principles of the Constitution. They were brave, but they did not see the full picture before them. And that has been our problem. We haven't seen the full picture. We haven't grasped the importance of changing uh, and present, sorry, presenting an alternate uh, model of change that is necessary. So we mirror. What's another significance? Well, in the SESTA KV, one of the things we've discovered in, in recent uh, days, weeks now, is that there is a presumption, even in their system, that a SESTA KV is the presumption of life. So a SESTA KV has to have a life expectancy. And that life expectancy is 70 years. 70 years. Well, can we think of something that the system at the moment likes us, not just likes us, but mandates us to do within 65 years or 70 years of our life? That's right. We are forced to retire. Forced to retire. Isn't that interesting? So we retire and we now become a retiree. Our standings change and we are now under a new SESTA KV. And as we've been looking at these uh, periods of uh, SESTA KVs and we've been looking at the connection between those three papal bulls we've spoken of before, those three original testamentary trusts that come from Unum Sanctum, 1302, when Boniface claimed the world and all of us as the property of the Pope. When we look at uh, the uh, Roman pontiff, Romanus Pontifex, in uh, 1455, the claiming of the land, the first crown of Baal, the first crown of Satan. And then in 1481, Attorney Regis, the eternal crown. And then in the third, in 1540, in Convocation, the first being real property, land. The second being personal property, the slave. The third being the soul. And people say, surely, surely we don't live in a world where it is based on someone claiming in one trust the, the beneficial entitlement, a hidden trust that they deny. Surely they have not still maintained a system of slavery of the flesh. How could this be? I don't believe you. It's not possible. And then you're talking about the soul. This is ridiculous. How could they? Well, we start looking at cycles. We start looking at cycles around and the things that are hidden in plain sight that reinforce this is a well-oiled system in front of us. Well, let's look at the souls, for example, in the 70-year cycle. A cycle that involves dramatic events sacrifices if you like 
to Baal, sacrifices to Satan. Let's have a look at that cycle. Well, we have 1581. The Sesta KV for the capturing of souls then needs to be renewed. Even though it's set up for us individually, the whole system needs to be renewed. So it's renewed in 1651. Count 70 years further. 1721. Go and have a look at these dates. They have dates of great significance. 70 years from that. 1791. What happened then? Well, we've seen the French Revolution. 70 years from that. 1861. Now, anyone that is born in America would know the significance of the year 1861. Move forward 70 years. 1931. The origin of the Bank for International Settlement. Count 70 years from that date. What happened and what came into play? Yes, the Patriot Act. But what also happened 70 years from that? 2001, September. Okay, well, what do we... People say, well, you, you talk about, as we did last week, this, this claim that there is a giant uh, bank, which is a temple, which is a symbolic replica of the Temple of Jerusalem, founded in 1540 between a deal between the Vatican and the Crown of England. People say this is just conspiracy gone mad. Yes, we have the inner temple. Yes, we have the middle temple. But no mention of the outer temple. So we, we explain that the outer temple is Old London. Old London, the name of Old London being the uh, square mile, but also the golden square. And there is a direct connection between the golden square, something, a symbol that uses literally a symbol of a golden square, a measurement of a golden square. And it also includes a measurement used for uh, nautical navigation, which at the time was a symbol of the absolute navigation power of a power called Venice that was the headquarters of the Franciscans and the Franciscans being a monopoly of navigators for all trade at the time. You could not uh, ship, any ship could not sail without a Franciscan navigator. That was the law. They were the navigators. The compass and the square. The inner, the middle, the outer temple. The new Jerusalem. They sing the song. Sure, but people aren't convinced. Well, it is the temple, it is the new place of the court of the Rota that mysteriously disappeared uh, around the Council of Trent. The word court is not used for any of the subsequent entities created after the Council of Trent where we see instead of the original entities like the sacred penitentiary, the court of the Rota, the chancery from which we get chancellor, the treasury, all disappear and we're replaced with this concept of congregations. Does anyone seriously believe that the Vatican, founded on ancient principles, suddenly dissolved its ancient entities? What happened to them? Did they just decide, like Vatican II, they didn't want them anymore? Or did they go somewhere else? Where did the sacred penitentiary go? Where did the chancery go? Where did the treasury go? And where did the court, the Supreme Court, the highest court of the Vatican, go? Well, when you look at Wikipedia or Jesuitpedia, whatever you like, and you start looking, you see this nefarious history where they say, oh, no, no, the court, the, the, the rota continued, but it's now the apostolic signatura that is the highest, and there's all these changes. I mean, it's, it's fudging history, which is that they're famous for. But there was only ever one entity called the court, the court of Rota, and it vanished. And at the same time, we see the emergence of the inner, middle, and, and, and outer temple, the expulsion of the apparent expulsion of the hospitaliers, and the creation of the crown temple, the court. Well, 
One of the things we spoke of is that uh, their job was to salvage souls lost at sea. This is the definition of Sister KV. It's salvaging. And the word that is associated with that is salvation. And one of the hard things that people would have had difficulty in understanding or, and, and appreciating, and I understand this, is, well, if this is a bank, how, how did they store souls, given that souls are a, a ethereal concept? Excellent question. Well, they would need some medium to store the souls if we were looking at something physical. And what would be an excellent medium in which to store ethereal souls if you were reapers of souls? Of course, if you're a reaper of a soul, you would wear a black robe. You would be a gali because the oldest reapers of souls date back to the city of Ur when Ur was converted into the largest and most sacred necropolis of the ancient world where kings and princes and nobles would uh, pay the gala, the gali, to um, be entered into the city of the dead, Ur, before the gali moved to Rome and managed the giant necropolis on Mons Vaticanus, Vatican Hill, before they built the catacombs over the necropolis in which to put the temple of Kybel above the still fully functioning, fully operating necropolis of Rome, the noble necropolis of Rome, which existed and still functioned for hundreds and hundreds of years after that. Well, the Gali moved to Rome and, of course, became the initiates to Saturn, from which we get Satan, the grim reapers, the reapers of souls. So if you have uh, people reaping of souls, then the obvious garb, the obvious uh, outer appearance is that they would wear black robes. Now, do you know anyone that wears black robes? I do. I've seen them. They sit in the court. They belong to the Bar Association. They come back to the Crown Temple, the very thing we're talking about. So let's talk about this thing of gold. Where does this... Where, where do we get this uh, medium to, to uh, store souls? And I just gave you the word then, gold. But it's not just gold, it's gold in a particular form. It's gold in gold bars. And because we have chocolate bars and other forms of bars, the word bar probably doesn't evoke any negative Context, but it's worth going and seeing some of the definitions of bar, and you'll find two bar, two definitions of bar that have particular meaning for what we're describing. One is a rod of iron. Now you've probably heard the concept uh, uh, you know, rule of iron or ruled with a rod of iron. Uh, this is ruled with a bar. So there is a control definition in the meaning of bar. And another is a barrier. Something that keeps something in is another definition of bar. So as gold has been an accursed metal that has caused the downfall of civilization after civilization, how? Well, the parasites who have been around for a long, long time have known that when you start issuing gold coins into a society, you are controlling a, uh, a narrow commodity. You are issuing something that people value. Instead of them treating the medium as a, a neutral element, they start to worship the medium itself. And pretty, sure, pretty soon you, you end up having uh, a Great Depression. It happened under Caesar when he went from uh, base metal currencies to the currency of gold at the direction of the bankers. And it's happened in civilization after civilization. They issue gold or they issue gold back currency. And pretty soon, 5, 10, 15 years later, the civilization or the country is in a great severe depression, a cursed metal when it is associated with finance. So what better metal, what better medium 
if one is in the game of cursing, then to transmute the 